So I lost my my football scholarship because uh, uh, I got in a, a skirmish on the football field, and you know I couldn't leave like like that's why I tell my young people when you go to college, young know, leave that street stuff mm-hmm. like at home. Like you you don't you don't go to college to to still be in the street. We want to we go to college to learn something. Right. But I was down there still trying to be like big bad dude. So I lost my scholarship, went to another school, lost lost that, got put out of that school, almost went to jail playing around, and I went home and started selling cars. Wow. At nineteen. Wow. And when I when I started I, I was the worst car salesman in the world. <laughs> I never. I ain't gonna lie to you. I worked at a place called Capital Nissan uh, on Rhode Island Avenue in D.C. and I sold two cars. One of them I sold to this girl who became my girlfriend. She <laughs> called me one day and said, "What you doing?" I was like, "I ain't doing nothing. I don't sell cars. I'm just up here." <laughs> she was like, "I'll come get you. You can go back to school, mm. and you can live with me." And I went and lived there. I went back to UDC, got my education, started taking it serious. I started lying to people, telling them I was a comedian. They put me on the, on the, uh, on the show. Def Comedy Jam came in town. The student government dude put me on the show. I wasn't a comedian, but I went on stage, and I ain't get booed, so I was like, I'm going to give this shit a try. Started going to open mics, open mics. Man, this dude named Bob Sumner saw me, and he put me on... On, on TV, that was about eight months after I was like, I wasn't even twenty. So, now that's interesting. So you're saying that you didn't have no desire, no one edged you. You just, just negotiated again. <laughs> I mean, <I'm> negotiated. <laughs>